Welcome to Adapt and Close, and thank you for joining the channel. Um, let's do some questions in the next generation start. This basically this is for the next generation folks, but it's the same content. Um, but in a, the questions are long in a case form, and so let's see how it's done. If you want to learn how to write and do next generation questions, this is the way it's done. Same topic, but in a different format. So usually the questions will be long with a bunch of information. You have to weed through it and find the main point. A 35-year-old with a brain tumor was admitted for resection after failed chemotherapy. She has been doing well until recently when the surgeon noted changes in her vision. She had went on eventful tumor debulking. Pushed up day one, the nurse recorded urine output of 20 cc for eight hours. Vitals were all normal. All coaches were negative. A ICP monitor is in place with normal readings. GCS was 14. Um, heart regular rhythm. Lungs were clear, but largely abdomen is soft, non tender, non distended. And therefore, the question they're asking you is a selector apply. The nurse should anticipate which of the fo following prescriptions. So um, basically, you have to go back and then figure out. What is being asked? The being asked, I think, following the being asked is what do you anticipate in this setting, in the selector apply? Then you have to find your case. Don't panic. Just sit down, think about it, spend some time, one minute, analyze the question, come up with your case, rewrite it. And then when you rewrite it, you take your content and you take your content with you so that you don't have to keep on going back to the question again and again and again. They will present the question to you all the time, but don't read it again after you spend the one minute to analyze it. So uh, I see, So we know that 35 year old, so I circle 35, she has a brain tumor, was admitted for resection after she failed chemotherapy. She has been doing well until recently when the surgeon noted there's a change in her vision. She underwent uneventful tumor debulking. So she underwent some surgery. And post of day one, the nurse recorded a urine output of what? 20 cc over eight hours. Vitals are all normal. All the cultures were negative. And ICP is also working well. The GCS is 14, which is expected. And then the rest of the vitals in the exams is normal. So you have to say that. You said, what are your buzzwords? Surgery, brain surgery. Okay. Um, had a brain surgery. Now urine output. It's like 20 cc over eight hours. That's that's not good, right? That's all. All this information they're giving you is irrelevant. You can say everything is normal because a ICP monitor is normal. A GCS is expected. Abdomen, everything look fine. And I will just break it this down into a simple form. You don't have to go and chase every single word. She has a brain tumor. She was getting chemotherapy. She just had surgery. Fine. Now, after surgery, that's all you care about. After surgery, 20 cc, eight hours, urine output. Then when you look at everything, everything is normal. What do you want to do? Then you bring your content. You said anybody who has brain surgery, brain surgery, there's two things I need to worry about. Okay, brain surgery. There's two things. You see that they're going to DI versus SIDH. It can happen because of the disruption to their um, pituitary gland. The pathway can destroy. Even single infection can cause DI or uh, SIDH. Don't just limit yourself. So there's two things that can happen. And you said, well, if it's DI, well, I know what to do. If it's SIDH, I know. So after you rewrite it, you say, okay, I'm taking my content and take it with me. So what do you expect to do to find what is wrong with the patient? That's what they're asking you. What prescription do you need? That's all. What do you prescription as a nurse you need so that you can figure out if it's DI or SIDH? So then you come back to your answer to questions. Chest history. Will chest history help you with DI, SIDH? What do you use to distinguish between them? No. You use urine and an electrolyte and serum electrolyte. You're looking for sodium concentration, urine concentration, uh, the, the way the urine looks like, 
and the serum concentration and osmolarity. That's all. So those content is what you're going to use to answer the question. There's no strategy. It just you going back to your content. Then when you get your content, you take your content as your strategy, and then you go for it. So chest ray, no, it's not going to help me. Start at CT. The ICP is monit monitor is normal. It doesn't tell me this GCS of 14 shouldn't distract you and say, I'm chasing for this. You just had surgery, post up the watch. You're a little bit confused. It's fine. It's okay. Serum electrolyte. Yes. I need to get a serum electrolyte and see what is going on with the sodium or osmolarity. Um, this is supposed to be urine, urine electrolyte. So urine electrolyte. So sorry, this is supposed to be urine electrolyte. ABG negative. So I need serum or uh, electrolyte and urine electrolyte. So three and four are right. Okay. And so that's the answer for right there. We're done with that question. Then you move forward. The, the, the question is going to follow you wherever you go. So so that you don't have to go back. So I rewrote it again, and but you got to focus on what the question is asking now. So you don't have to, you already know what the problem is. You've already analyzed it. You want to know what you're thinking about. You know what is wrong with the patient at the surgery, and now showing signs that is not consistent with what you're supposed to do, having urine up with 20 cc in, in eight hours. So the next should Expect which laboratory findings, okay? Laboratory findings for a suspected diagnosis. This is the now the new type of SATA. You're not just going to do, deal with what you have. You have to compare two things now to make your differential diagnosis. In doctor terms, we call it differential diagnosis, and that's what we do to make a diagnosis. Now, you know it can be DI or it can be SIDH or DI. So how do you distinguish it? What do you think? Will your serum, they've given you what they're looking for. This is what they find. Serum, sodium is 130. It's what? Low. Which one? Your serum, sodium is going to be low. This one. Okay. And this one, you said, no, negative. Urine, sodium is 80. So the normal urine, sodium, random, is like 20. Okay. 24 hours, it can go to like 100, 200, but normal urine sodium is 20. Your body doesn't want to get rid of its sodium all the time. It want to hold on to sodium. So your normal urine random, random sodium is usually 20. And this is almost four times. And which one would the sodium be high? Well, it's going to be SIDH because you are absorbing all the water. And therefore the urine sodium will be concentrated. This one, it's negative. Serum osmolarity of 300. Normal serum os osmolarity goes up to like 800. If it's 8, 8, 285, if it's greater than 285, 285, then it's concentrated. This look concentrated. Which one? The concentration will be high. It's not SIDH. It's going to be DI because you getting rid of all your water in DI, you cannot absorb them, so you get dehydrated and the urine get um, your blood get concentrated. Urine specific gravity of this, 1.035. Normal urine specific gravity, this is the range, 1.003, then you move the three forward, that's all. You know the first one and move the three forward, 1.030. This is the normal range. This range is greater than the IS1. That means the urine is concentrated. Who is going to have concentrated urine? This guy and this no. Urine is dark. Yes, concentrated urine. This guy and no. And no. So this is uh, just a review of endocrine so that you guys can see how they can ask you. So you can check boxes, different setup. Are you doing it too at the same time? And that's the way it goes. So now we move forward and see what they have for us. The same question, but then they're giving us a different 
they want us to do something that's different. Select all that apply. Again, like I said, I like to give you these questions to become comfortable. You, you, you broaden your scope and you can think and you, you become comfortable when you see this question, you don't worry about it. What plan of care the NESH expect for a presumptive diagnosis of SIDH? Now, they've te they've, I've told you that this is what is the diagnosis. You have SIDH. So what presumptive diagnosis, what plan of care will you institute? So now I have SIADH. So let me give you a little bit of content. Um, normally, your ADH, what it does is your body secret ADH when you dehydrate it. When you dehydrate it, your, um, your serum osmolarity is high. So your body said, hmm, I don't like sodium is going up. I need to dilute it a little bit. So we go to the, your body go to the pituitary and said, give me some ADH. Pituitary give you ADH. Then you tell ADH, go to the kidney and tell the kidney, I need more sodium. I don't need more sodium. I need more water. So just give me some water, okay? So they hold on to the water and then they dilute the sodium. And then when you get to a certain level, you go back and tell the pituitary, no more ADH and you shut it down. So there's a feedback loop. In SIDH, there's no more feedback loop. You're making ADH nonstop. So basically you keep on holding on to your water, hold on to your water, and therefore, these patients are fluid overloaded. Okay. They are fluid overloaded. Right. And then if you're fluid overloaded, then you hold it into your fluid. Then you dilute your serum. Your blood becomes diluted. Dilution of blood means osmolarity goes down. Your sodium also goes down. Okay. Your blood pressure go up you get headaches right and your sodium can go low to the point that it can go to like one less than 135 that's where you start having have seizure so that's why sidh the number one problem look for seizure or brain problem they will come confused comatose or they're going to seizure that's why it's dangerous because of that, they're fluid overloaded. We need to prevent them from having more fluid. And we don't need to dilute their sodium more. Those two things, listen again. No more fluid. And I, I shouldn't dilute your sodium anymore. So that's what I'm going to take with me, the rewrite, and um, answer the question. Fluid restriction. Yeah, I said it. This is where they confuse you with. This is where they confuse you with the 0.45 normal saline. You don't want to give them any fluid that is less than 1% or 0.99%. So you don't want to do that. So what are you trying to do if you give them 0.45 have normal saline, you diluting the normal saline again. That's the trick and question answer. They always give you to, they say, oh, 0.5, uh, 0.45%, 0 0.45 percent of normal saline. Then you say, oh, okay, I'm giving him salt. No, you, this is diluted salt. And that will make the sodium go lower. Therefore, um, oh, this one is correct. I take it. So fluid restriction is good. This is wrong. So we restrict them for fluid, okay, because they hold you onto the fluid. You don't want to give them and sodium that is lower than 1%, 5%, yes, excellent, I'm replacing. So you can give them three to 5% of sodium chloride. So that's good. What is the problem underlying pathophysiology? Go back, ADH is the problem. So either you get rid of the ADH, or you block it. You don't give them any more ADH. Desmopressin is ADH. Therefore, negative. Demicycline, yes. You see, they have the same name. They will confuse you with this. Demicycline, block ADH. So I'm blocking you. So ADH. 
and demi cycling is better. Can he vaping? Yes. That is the another drug that can block ADH. So remember, they have last name as vaping, vaping, vaping. And so these are what you need. Can he vaping, demi cycling, um, 3%, no, 5% normal setting and fluid restriction. This is the treatment for SIDH. What I did, nothing. I just make up question that consistent with the, the, the disease process. That is the enclosed people. They have nothing to give you. So if you know your SIDH, you know it well, there's no question that will, um, you know, you can do it. You can use the same thing for current exams or the next generation, but this is the same content. It's not changing, it's not going anywhere. So I hope you enjoy yourself. And then we, this is the way you get comfortable with cases where you have to analyze it. I'm not doing anything. I'm just giving you a bunch of ways and then making it happen. Take care of yourself and see you later. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe, put comment, likes, uh, let me know what we need to do to improve this channel. And take care of yourself. Bye-bye.